Morning, Mr. Hunter. Ah, morning, Mrs. T. All for you, as usual. Oh, the post, it gets worse and worse. Anything from Canada from Pat? No. No, nothing from Jenny? No, <laughs> sorry. Just the usual begging letters, charity appeals. Ah, there's one here for you to uh, open a bazaar. What's this, Mark? Personal and private. Oh, that was. It was very abusive. I filed it in the waste paper basket. But I like an abusive letter for a change. What do you want to do that for? You sent it. It was signed Sylvie Summers. Sylvie Summers? Well, she's my friend. Well, some friend, judging by that letter. Oh, it's Sylvie all over. Don't mean half what she says. No, no donkey shares. Come on, end it over. That's yeah, pretty strong stuff. I'm not made of cotton wool. Come on. Oh, oh you want to watch your back. On a bit too. Here, his bait's got the car out there. Yes. Then I'm off to Fuller Street. I'm going to have this out with Sylvie. Well, we're due at the office in ten minutes. Mr. Lever wants us to meet that new consultant, Mr. Burnett. Oh, well, they'll have to wait, won't they? I'm de I mean, I've got more important things. You go and see Mr. What's his name and tell him I'm delayed. How do I get to the office? By bus. You're not going to have my car. Here, if I'm not back from Sylvie's by dinner time, uh, you'll know I've been running. I'm not one to beat about the bush, Burnett. I like you. I like the way you work. Your proposals are fine. First rate. In fact, we've already put some of them into operation. Certain economies you mentioned. Aye, I won't deny them, please. Well, that's good, Mr. Lever. I knew you'd get the point. It was more or less obvious. No, not to everybody. I missed it myself. Now, I've got another commission for you. Dunridge Construction will shortly be tendering for the biggest redevelopment job in the country. Bankside? Bankside. This is confidential. The whole industry will be after that contract. Worth over five million. It'll be dog-eat-dog. Dog. What's your proposition? We'll pay you a generous retainer if you go right through Dunwich Construction, checking costs and recommending economies. What do you say? Mm, sounds okay. Won't you have to get permission from your chairman? This is Thursday. A formality. She leaves this sort of thing to me, you know. Mind you, she's no fool. She'll be here shortly. See for yourself. But will you take the job? If the price is right. I want to know why you wrote me that letter. As if you didn't know. What's up? What am I supposed to have done? I don't know any more than the men in the moon. I can do my own drying, thank you. Here. I don't want no favours. Turn it up, Sylvie, or I'll... I'll you're I'll, what, may I ask? I'll tell your old man about you and that coach driver on that drive to Hastings five years ago. My old man? I wonder the name doesn't freeze on your lips. Frank? Well, what's happened? What's, what am I supposed to have done? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Only give him the sack. Only took away his livelihood. He's been sacked. <laughs> As if you didn't know. Sacked out of your firm. He works at the um, Draper Street office, don't he? He did, but he don't now. Here, what, shit? You mean you really didn't know? Cross me out, note to data. First I've heard of it. What's he supposed to have done? Nothing. They said he was redundant. <laughs> Polite name for the scrappy. Oh, it's fair broke him up, Alice. It really has. I mean, it's no chicken and it's hard for a man like that to start again. And you thought I'd done that? You really thought I'd go and do a thing like that? Well, it don't say much for our friendship, do it? Oh, I'm sorry, Alice. But you know how it is. I was upset. It's not just the money. Do you know, when Frank come home, he could hardly tell me. It was, it was like as if he'd been poleaxed. Oh, I was choked. Yes, well, somebody else is going to be choked and polex before I've finished. You tell Frank his job is safe. I'll see to that. I'll see to a few more things, too. Oh, Sylvie, come Well, on. I've got young Carol on my mind, too, you see. Now, she's a worry. What's up with Carol? Oh, nothing, really. Only, well, she's got this job as a secretary, you see, and I think she's got the idea that she'd like a place of her own, you see. Well, don't she live here anymore? No, she shares a flat up west with three other girls. Well, I suppose it's all right. But you know, Alice, I hardly see her from one month to another. She writes mine, and she sends money, too. Oh, she's very good, really. Oh, I suppose I'm worrying about that. Oh, nothing. your Carol's all right. She's got her head screwed on. Yeah. And you tell Frank I'll see to him. Now, don't you worry. Well, but, but I don't Don't want worry, to... I said. Of course, you know what the trouble is, don't you? No. Half the trouble, anyway. No. Well, a lot of these high-up executive blokes, they don't think of people as people. Know what they call them? No. Units of labour. <laughs> Honest, you ought to hear them talk, girl. Give your headache. Oh, come on, put the kettle on and let's have a cup of tea before I burst. Right. Hello, Mr. Lever. 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 Hello
I've been waiting here with Mr. Burnett. Yes, I see. We all have to make it later then, won't we? All right, Mr. Hunter. She's not coming. Being held off, so she'll see us later. Oh, that's great, isn't it? I needn't have wasted my time. Still, I haven't quite absorbed these figures. Perhaps you'd give me an office. I can go over them whilst I'm waiting. Oh, I'm sorry, but that file's not allowed out of this office. What? Here, I'll tell you what, though. Sit there till you've finished it, then give it to Mrs. Thursday's secretary when you leave. All right. Mrs. Thursday will be some time yet, so make yourself comfortable. Oh, uh, thank you. Right, now, I'll leave you to it. See okay. you later. Give me an outside line. Oh, Bennett here. Yes, I thought you'd like to know I've got that commission. At the moment, I'm sitting in the chairman's office with a file of their costings right in front of my eyes. Your coffee, Mr. Hunter. Ah, thank you, Sally. Pour it out, will you, please? work at home, Mr. Hunter? Uh, no, not as a rule, but Mrs. Thursday took the car. Has the second post come yet? No. You were settling down all right? Oh, yes. Think you'll like it here? Yes. Well, if you have any problems, you know where to come. A word to me, you know. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hunter. I want you to enjoy your work, you see, and uh, if at any time you feel uh, lonely or depressed, well, I have an excellent collection of gramophone records in my room. It's very kind of you, sir. Not at all, Sally. Just count on me as your friend. Thank you. Has the second post come yet? No. That's the second time you've asked. You must be expecting something important. Yes, well, I did rather think there might have been one or two letters for me today. Sounds as though it's your birthday. It is. Oh, many happy returns. <laughs> 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 if you'd said so before, we could have got Cook to bake you a cake. Oh, it doesn't matter. At my age, a birthday is a doubtful cause for celebration. At your age? But you're not old. Uh, not really old, I mean. I can see you're a young lady of refinement and courtesy. We shall do very well together, Sally. Aye, aye, here. What's this? A little teeny take, then? Mr. Hunter was just telling me that today was his birthday. Get away. Your birthday, is it? Oh, you don't look the sort of bloke what has birthdays. Thank you. Today, is it? It is. Well, now, this calls for a little celebration. This does. Here, here, you don't want that stuff, mate. Put that away. Here, now, look. What say we all have a little snort? Just to wish you all you wish yourself. Oh, it's a bit early, isn't it? The sun's not over the yard arm yet. God, it's never too early to celebrate your birthday. Hey, you mightn't be here next year to have one, you know, mate. You have a wonderful gift for cheering people <laughs> up. <laughs> Thank you. I'll save it till later. I'm uh, taking Mrs. Thursday out to dinner tonight. Oh, yeah, what about you, love? You join me in wishing him all the best, won't you? Oh, no, I don't drink. I mean, only a sherry now and then. Oh, well, I can't oblige you, love. Whatever this is, it ain't sherry. Well, now, we can't let occasion like this pass, can we? Happy birthday. <coughs> hey, you know, it's people like you would get a man a reputation as a lone drinker. He's the lit man from Draper Street, you know. Ah, now I get it. Well, he hasn't been singled out. The whole of the Draper Street staff are redundant. What? It couldn't be helped. It's unfortunate, but inevitable. We've taken the advice of a business efficiency expert, Burnett. I was hoping to introduce you to him earlier this morning. He's a top man. I don't care who he is. You can't throw men on the scrap heap. You can't run a business on sentiment, Mrs. Thursday. And you can't run a business without it, neither. People aren't bits of paper to be thrown away when you're finished with them. Why wasn't I told? Well, we didn't want to bother you with trifling details. No, I'm sure. And how many trifling details have been sacked? Well... Oh, how many? About 50. Have you got a list? Oh, yes. Well, I'd like to see it. Well, I'm sure the names won't mean very much to you. They'll mean a sight more <clears throat> to me than they do to you. I know most of them. Well, he's not going for a start. Who's that? Mr. Peters, who runs the uh, costing department. Yes, yeah, so we have a new machine to do his job. Anyway, I understand that he's not very easy to get on with. No, he isn't. He's pernickety. Still, he creates hell, and if there's a speck of dust in the office, but... Then surely you agree that we sack him? Nothing of the sort. He's been here ever so long, and where's he going to get a job at his age? Oh, that's not our concern. Oh, no, Stanwell, he'll be all right. He's in the dispatch. 
Miss Bert, Miss Robbins, Miss Waters, and Miss Dennis. This Dennett. is Thursday. It was agreed that I should have sole authority for staff reorganisation. Ah, oh, no. And look at the mess you've made of it so far. You wouldn't like to be on this list, would you? Me? No, of course you wouldn't. No more than most of these, are bit. Oh, they'll find other jobs. Maybe some of them will, and maybe some of them won't. And it's those that won't that I'm concerned with. I remember my Bert was out of work two years before the war, well, and it wasn't funny, well, I can tell you. They'll get severance pay. Oh, and that makes it all right, I suppose. Well, I'm going to keep this list to find out about those I don't know. Now, well, it's too late. We've issued notices to those people. Some of them have already found other jobs. Good, but it's those that haven't that I want to find out about. Now, look here, Mrs. Thursday. If you're going to come in here and start upsetting my planning and... Well, you leave me no alternative. I'll have to... Resign? You want your cards? Oh, now, look. Listen, this fella that started it, or what's his name? Frank Summers, and he didn't start it, I did. Well, supposing I did find him another job. Doing what? I don't know. I don't care. He need do a damn thing if that suits you. What? Pay him to sit about all day doing nothing? That's a fine way to run a business. I'm surprised at a man like you suggesting it. I'll go through this list with Mr. Hunter tonight. We're going to out to have a meal. And I'll talk to you about it in the morning. Ten o'clock sharp, here, right? Oh, and don't hurry yourself. I shan't be needing the office any more today. I could feed a family for what they charge here for a plate of soup. What's uh, steak tartare? Oh, it's minced steak, raw. Oh, thank you, waiter. What? 35 shillings and they don't even bother to cook it? <laughs> don't spoil it. It's my birthday, remember, a special occasion. Oh, sorry, yes, your treat, isn't it? Well, if you don't mind paying. Oh, I nearly forgot. For you. All the best and many happy returns. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. It's, it's very kind of you, Mrs. T. Well, I don't even know if you're going to like it. Well, open it. Pipe? Oh, well, that's, that's exactly what I wanted. It's simply marvellous. Pipe. You do like it, then? Well, just what the doctor ordered. I never actually smoked a pipe, of course, but... Oh, my Bert always smoked a pipe. Really? Well, more manly, I think, than cigarettes, so you are pleased. Delighted. Oh, you're not just saying that now, you're sure? Oh, it's a wonderful present, Mrs. T. Here's to you, and thank you. I must uh, try to find a suitable tobacco. Well, Bert always smoked old twist. It used to stink the place out, but he liked it. Perhaps it might be a bit strong for you to start with, though. The neighbours complained they could smell it through the walls. <laughs> Here. I think I know that girl over there. The pretty one with the big man. Oh? Carol Summers used to live next door to me in Fuller Street. I was only talking to her mum this morning. Small world. Well, she's come a long way from Fuller Street. Mm. This is Thursday. Yeah. I used to live in the same street. She's the one who came into all that money. Yes. What a waste. She's all right. Salt to the earth. So don't you say anything against her. Listen, Carol, introduce me. What? You heard, introduce me. After all, I'm in the same line of business as she is. We ought to get together. Oh, must have a good job. Come into a place like this, you know. She's dressed up to the nines, too. Well, what is her job, you know? Well, she used to be a photograph model. But she left that, then Sylvie said she'd uh, got a job as a secretary. But um, doing very well, because she sends her mum money. But she always was bright, full of tricks, you know. Knew what she wanted. Oh, looks as if she's found it. Yeah. No, she's with, don't you? No. George Noble. Oh, who's he then? Oh, he's a big businessman, property. Oh. In our line, really, except that... Uh, except what? Well, his methods are a bit suspect. There's been a lot of talk. I oh, fancy you listening to a lot of loose gossip. Here, yeah. coming over. Mrs. Thursday, remember me? Carol. Oh, <laughs> remember you. Well, how are you, dear? Oh, 
fine. You look lovely. Fancy meeting up in a place like this. Mm. How are you keeping? Oh, I'm fine. You don't look so bad yourself. Oh, mustn't grumble. And see, I saw your mum this morning. We was talking about you. Oh. <laughs> oh, I must go over and see her, but I've been so busy, you see. Well, how is she? Oh, she's all right. She's a bit worried, you know, but... Oh, sorry. This is Mr. Hunter. Uh, it's his birthday, you know. That's why we're here, really. How do you do? Hello. Many happy returns. Thank you. Oh, I want you to meet a friend of mine. This is my boss. Mr. Noble, Mrs. Thursday. I'm delighted to have the opportunity of meeting you, Mrs. Thursday. Same here, I'm sure. I've seen donkey's years since I've seen Carol. Mm. George, they're celebrating a birthday. Oh, are they indeed? Many congratulations. Oh, no, not mine. His, Mr. Hunter's. Oh, he's my financial advisor and friend. How do you do? How do you do? Well, I suppose you need all the help you can get. Plenty on your plate, eh? Yes, it gets a bit like a madhouse sometimes, but Mr. Hunter manages marvellous. Yes, of course. Well, we mustn't intrude. Uh, Carol wanted to say hello, and I couldn't resist the opportunity of meeting you. Oh, well, don't rush away. I've hardly seen Carol. Can't you sit down for a minute? Uh, that's if it's all right with Mr. Hunter. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Well, we were just going to order. I, I wonder... Well, why don't we make it a foursome? But that's up to Mr. Hunter, really. Delighted, providing it's clearly understood that it's my party. And provided it's clearly understood that uh, I buy the champagne. Uh, waiter, could we have our champagne, please? Thank you. Oh, champagne Carol. Long way from Fuller Street, isn't it? <laughs> Fuller Street. Now, I've heard such a lot about it from Carol. Oh, yes. Well, it must I... have been a very fascinating place. I lived there for over 25 years, you know. Really? Mm. And now you're living in the West End? Oh, wonderful. So, yeah, oh, wonderful. Ever since she was a baby, I've really? Well, cheers. <laughs> uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Hunter. Thank you. All the best. I know Mrs. Thursday relies upon your judgment, Hunter, so I want to give you the full picture. Now, you know about the reorganization in the Draper Street section. Well, I didn't know there was to be any reorganization. I did hear it was to be closed down. Reorganized? Closed down? It's the same thing. Oh, is it? Essentially, yes. Well, I'm still not used to these business subtleties, you know. I'll catch on in time, no doubt. Yeah. Well, the fact is... Yes? New pipe. Yes. It takes time to break them in. Yes? Be all right in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's something to look forward to anyway. You were saying, Sir Charles. Well, the fact is, I understand from Mr. Lieber that Mrs. Thursday is somewhat concerned about the redundancies of Draper Street. Oh, that's putting it mildly. She's furious she wasn't consulted. Yes, we committed a grave error there. However, the thing must... <laughs> Sorry, I'm... Second boxes of matches this morning. You were saying? The thing must go through, Hunter. Now, you worked with Mr. Dunbridge. You understand the realities of the situation. I want you to persuade her to reconsider her objections. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not so sure that I don't agree with them. There are a lot of people involved. Oh, good heavens, man, there's a labor shortage. They'll find another job tomorrow. Now, you will speak to Mrs. Thursday, won't you? Well, I try. I can't promise there'll be any change. Good. That's all I ask. <laughs> all right, Hunter. Yes, I think so. Are you smoking in that thing? Old twist. Old twist? That'll kill you. <coughs> I think it has. Yeah, well, uh, you won't forget about Mrs. Thursday, will you? I'll be in my office if you want me. Um, I've got to be back by six. Yes, dear, I mustn't keep you. Well, uh... What do you want to talk about? Well, just a minute, dear. I'll count these rows. Yes. Well, so, you work for Mr. Noble, then? Yes. Oh. As a secretary, like? Yes. Oh, very nice of him to take you about like he does. Oh, he's a very nice man. Carol, you know, I've known you since you was a kiddie and used to run in and out of our place with our Jenny. In fact, Bert and I, we looked Oh, Uncle was... Bert. Wasn't he marvellous? He gave me many a good laugh, you know. Yes, I oh, know. <laughs> I've got no right to interfere, Carol. And I'm not going to interfere, dear. Only you see it's your mum I'm thinking of. What about her? Well, she's worried about you much more than she lets on. Well, she has no cause to be. 
Oh, Carol, don't be like that. You know, I'm fond of you, and I, I thought... You that... thought that gave you the right to pry into my private affairs? Carol, your mum thinks you're living with three other girls. She thinks you've got a job as a secretary. Well... Well, if you're going to let her go on believing a whole lot of lies, well, there's nothing more to be said then, is there? Oh, good. Only when she does find out, and she will, you know, she's no fool, when she does find out, it's going to break her up. Do you realise that? Find out what? Oh, Carol, don't sit there pretending, dear. I mean, well, I'm no fool neither. Is he going to marry you? Who said anything about marriage? Oh. Well, may I ask who the lucky man is? Oh, you know who he is, Mr. Noble. George? Me? Married George? You must think I'll just come up with the milk. Oh, Carol, look. Oh, all right. I can see you won't rest till you've got it out of me. So here it is. I am George's secretary, his personal secretary, but uh, I don't share a flat with three other girls. I live in George's flat. We're, um, friends, close friends. Well, I like him. He's fun to be with. We have a good time together. But I wouldn't marry him. I don't suppose he'd marry me either. No, look, when I get married, it's going to be to the right man. But I'm not ready to settle down yet. All right? You satisfied? Well, it's not up to me to be satisfied or otherwise. Oh, well, then why all this inquisition? Well, because I'm thinking of your mum and dad like I've told you. They're much more straight-laced here than what straight I am. Straight-laced? <laughs> yeah, that's the word, all right. Especially him, my old man. You know, for years he tried to keep me hemmed in in that yes, place. Yes, I know, dear, and I've told him about it often. I warned him you'd break out one day if he didn't give you a bit more freedom. But that's not the point, dear. Well, then what is the point? Look, my mum would have killed me if I'd carried on like what you were doing. <gasps> well, I'm not you, am I? I'll sit down, Carol. I'll... You know the sort of bloke that he is, don't you? That you're mixed up with. George? Yes. I can't find one person to say a good word for him, in business oh, or outside it. You've turned into a right old stirrer, haven't you? You've been mixing it. You've been going round asking questions. I'm no stranger, Carol. I've known you since you was a baby. Oh. And I only think it's right that you should know. For well, I do know. I know he's not as bad as you make out. And anyway, I wouldn't care if he was. Look, I know what I want. I know where I'm going. So don't you worry about me. Now, is that all? Can I go now? Carol, don't get on your high horse. You see, I'm only speaking Well, if you say you're speaking for my own good, I'll scream. I know my own good, thank you. And it's none of your business. Oh, no, all right. I'm sorry. I won't say any more. No. You've said enough. Yeah, in about time, too. My throat's as dry as a button of a birdcage. I'm surprised to hear you say that, Mr. Lee. Hey. You drank two bottles of beer at lunchtime. Eh, uh, you started counting, have you? No. And how can you be thirsty? Chronic condition, love. Chronic condition. You are, love. Here you go. This lovely bit of cake, this, Alice. You're homemade, is it? I said it's a nice bit of cake, Alice. Yes, I made it. Yeah. Well, I'll get you to make me a bread and butter pudding when you get a bit of time, love. My favourite, you know. Here, what's the matter? Love, you look all upset. Is the cook been fiddling the housekeeper? Oh, no, no, I've just got something on me mind. Well, why don't you give it to wonder? That's what you're paying for, isn't it? Mm. No good keeping the dog and barking yourself, is it? He can't help. Well, come on. What is it? Come on, out with it. Better out than in, you know. Well, it's young Carol Summers. I mean, that girl that lived next door to me in Fuller Street. Young Carol, yeah. What about her? Well, she's living with some fella, Bill, and he's no good. Yeah, you mean little Carol? Of course, she's still at school, isn't she? No, she's grown up now, Bill. She's just been in to see oh, me. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, last time I seen her, she was at school, wasn't she? Hey, and she's got herself mixed up with a bloke, has she? Yeah, it's old enough to be her father. Yeah? Oh, I don't know. Some blokes have all... Yeah, hey, hey, that's shocking, isn't it? Yes, and he's a rotter into the bargain. Well, you can't do nothing about it, love. She ain't your kid. No, I suppose not. He's a swell man, though. 
No, we kill her. Uh, well, you better not tell him, had you? Mm. Hey, you don't want that in your conscience, I'm do you? I'm not going to tell him. I've got more sense. She's quite open about it. Tell me straight. She's out to have a good time. Well, kids is all the same now, love, all these youngsters. You, you can't do nothing about it. They, they, they just got to go their own way, didn't they? Got to learn the hard way. The same as I did, do you remember? When did you learn? Why, oh, you never even grew up, let alone learn. Well, you be fair, Alice. You remember that running I had with Poppy Coles? Who? Poppy Coles. I was going to marry her. Poppy Coles? What, that tall dark girl with the beauty spot would always smell to fish? Yeah, well, it wasn't her fault, was it? Her old man had a jelly deal store in the market. Uh, hey, listen, I'll tell you something I've never told anyone else before. I love that girl. <laughs> You're joking. Oh, I'm not, you know. One look from Poppy Coles and I'd break out in a cold sweat. Oh, I never knew about this. Yeah. Did you ask her to marry you? Well, no, he never got around to that, actually. What, you get engaged? No, no, no. He never got up to that, no. Well, what do you mean you were going to marry her? Well, well, it was her old man, you see. He offered me an half interest in the hill stall after the wedding, you well, see. What happened? Well, I had a couple of days on the hill stall and a couple of nights out with Poppy, and that was my lot. Oh, didn't she like you? Oh, yes, she liked me all right, but I couldn't stand the work, Alice. It was go, go, go. Oh, oh it nearly killed me, it did. <laughs> oh, Bill, you do spin them. You had me <laughs> believing you. <laughs> well, never mind. It took your mind off your worries, didn't it, love? Hey, hey, come in the other room and I'll open up a bottle of stout and I'll tell you all about me and Minnie Baines. Oh, yeah, she was a farmer's daughter down Sussex Way. What, oh, Minnie? big, strong girl she was. Oh, plenty of devil oh, in there no, was, too. Oh, where have you been? Round to see Mrs. Thursday. Good Lord, what on earth for? She asked me to go. Oh, what did she want? Nothing special. Well, she must have wanted something. Well, it was just to talk about old times. How can we leave it? You don't ask me, will you? Oh, don't pit George, for God's sake. All right, sweetie, all right, I'm sorry. What's the matter? She says something to upset you. Ah. Oh. I should worry about anything she said. Uh, then she did get at you. I'm not in the mood. Now, sweetie. Look, come just on. leave me alone. Now, don't play hard to get, sweetie. I don't like it. And you'll have to lump it, won't you? You haven't bought me, you know. Hey, you better let me do the talk, and I'll be blunt with her. No, Joe. Leave it to me. Tact, I think, is our best approach. All right, you'll be tactful. If that fails, I'll be uh, blunt. Uh, uh, oh, I, I didn't know there was anyone in here. Are you waiting to see our Alice, are you? We're waiting for Mrs. Thursday. Yeah, well, that's what I said. I, I'm her brother, you know. We know. Yeah, you both work for her, do you? We are the <coughs> joint managing directors of the company. Uh, uh, a couple of soft numbers, eh? Does she look after you all right? Well, she would, wouldn't she? Yeah, that, that, that's her nature, you know, our Alice. Always been the same, she has. Oh, you're lucky, you know. Thank you. Yeah. So long as you realise it, mates. Hey, hey, come here, come here, I'll tell you something. Here, come here. Mm -hmm. A little tip. Don't you ever let her catch you with your fingers in the till. Oh, she can't abide that. She can't abide dishonesty. She'd sooner give you the money than have you pinched. We're not likely to reach that pitch, Mr. Well, Sorry to well, keep oh. you all wait. Uh. What are you doing Well, I was here? just passing the time of day with a gentleman here, that's all. Well, I'll leave you to it then. <clears throat> oh, well, I'm very sorry to bring you all this long way, but uh, you know, hey. said it was urgent. Remember what I told you? Right, Charles, far away. Oh, yes. Well, Mrs. Thursday, uh, we thought we ought to have a little chat about the plans for streamlining the organization. Now, as you know, the government are pleading for greater efficiency in industry. They're asking us to increase our production, cut our costs, be more competitive. And I, <coughs> uh, we, as uh, managing directors, felt that it was up to our organization to play its full part. Well, Mrs. Thursday's not against that in principle. We've been uh, looking at last year's balance sheet, and she has uh, one or two ideas of her own for economies and so forth. Oh, splendid. We should be only too glad to take advantage of any ideas that Mrs. Thursday may have. <clears throat> I think we'd better get back to this business of reorganization. No, Joe, I think we ought to listen to Mrs. Thursday's ideas. Well, I was thinking, take the money what I get as chairman, 
And the money what you two get as managing directors, hmm? well, suppose we was to dock our money by one third. Are you suggesting we should take a cut? Time to be blunt. Now look here. I've worked, we've worked damned hard building up this business. There wouldn't be jobs here for any of these workers if it wasn't for people like us. Well, there'd be precious few jobs for managing directors like you, but for people like them. Oh, never mind that. Look, I've got figures here that prove that Draper Street is a white elephant. We should be £60,000 better off if we closed the place down, sold the site and invested the money elsewhere. Mrs. Thursday's not concerned with the bricks and mortar of Draper Street, simply with the position of the staff. That's right. If we was to save £60,000 a year, we could afford to treat them properly. Look, the shareholders will expect... Oh, I think you can safely leave the shareholders to Mrs. Thursday. And if any of them objects to people being treated like human beings, they can count on dealing with me as well as with Mrs. Thursday. Yes, that goes for me too. Mrs. Thursday, I must insist that... Ah, you've not been taking your doctor's day breaks, Indian herb mixture, like what I recommended. Anyway, I won't listen to any more arguments. My mind's made up and there it is. Uh, Mrs. Thursday. No, I said no. I was only going to suggest we might have a few words about the bank side tender. Bank side? Oh, well, that's different, yes. But the other matter, that's closed for good and all. Yes, uh... You don't have a thing to worry about, George. I've got the bank side job all tied up. No problems? Not for <laughs> us. They've got plenty. What do you mean? I put up a scheme to close their Draper Street headquarters. A good scheme. Now they're running around trying to get the chairman to agree to it. Oh, well, can you wonder? She was a char, you know. What she knows about business could be written on a pinhead. <laughs> Are you talking about Mrs. Thursday? Yes. You know her? Do I know her? Ah. Uh -huh. uh, well, you see, uh, jo uh, Mike works for me, but he, uh, he has his office in Dunwich House. Now, he works for you, but he's got an office in Dunwich House. Yeah, well, but it, 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 it's just a matter of business, dear. But uh, don't worry about it. How soon can you let me know about their bankside tender? Any day now. Right. Well, as soon as you can tip me off about their figures, I'll fill in my quote and shoot it in. But for Pete's sake, watch... Don't your worry, step George. They're point. too busy chasing after the chairman. And besides... That... And there. I know a woman who can tell your character from the way you sign your name. Well, she'd have a job to read mine. And mine. My hand aches so much I can't write to her like. <laughs> Looks like a doctor's prescription. Well, that's the lot, anyway. Ah, well. Oh, have you missed anything lately? No, I don't think so. Oh, then what about this? <laughs> My pipe. Yes, I found it tucked behind some books in the library. Oh, I wonder how it got there. Oh, I've left my tobacco at home. I'll smoke it later. Ah, well. I bought you two ounces of twist as a present. Oh, very thoughtful of you, Mrs. T. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, that's all we can do now. We've uh, an appointment with Sir James Ryan at the Town and Country Bank. Oh, how long have I got? About uh, ten minutes. Oh, well, I'd better get my hat on. You sit over there and have a nice smoke of your pipe. Where are we going? Venia's. What? That to push the cat near Park Lane? <laughs> that's right. Don't think they'd appreciate you calling it a calf, though. Oh, well, that's what it is. They may charge 30 shillings for a steak, but it's still run as a cat. Who's paying? He is. Oh, well, it's all right, isn't it? Yes. Ten and go on, dear. I'll never get used to these prices. You'll pay for the service and the chef. Oh, half the rent, too. Charging all that. I'll never get used to it. Oh, go on, light your pipe. Town and country bank, eh? Well, that's funny. What? Well, Bert once had a bit of money uh, in the town and country, the local town and country. And I know he wanted uh, an overdraft of five quid once. The manager wouldn't let him have it. <laughs> and now I'm going to have lunch with the chairman. Oh, you didn't go about it the right way. The secret of borrowing money from a bank is to provide the manager with absolute proof you don't need it. Oh, <laughs> no, I we'll never understand business. Oh, isn't it awful being rich? You know, Bert often did the pools, and we often used to talk about what we'd do with the money if he won, but it was never like this. Uh, what were you going to do? Oh, trip round the world. Perhaps buy a little farm or a little pub and some racing pigeons for Bert and a gramophone in a cabinet for me. Well, there's nothing to stop you going round the world now. Mm. Or from buying a pub, for that matter. No, it wouldn't be the same without Bert. And I couldn't clear off and leave them. Goodness knows what they'd get up to when my back was turned. Look what they did about Draper Street, wanting to sack all them people. You know, I was thinking about that all last night. 
because from a business point of view, they were right. But you can't just kick men out like that, can you? I don't think so. You stick to your guns. I'm going to, don't worry. Oh, that smell takes me back. Lovely. I bet you're enjoying that, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, Carol. <laughs> oh, they're lovely. Oh, you should now. Oh, don't be daft. I can oh. afford it. Oh. Well, how's Dad? Oh, he's better now, thank goodness. And when he knows that you've been round. Better? You never said he'd been ill. Your last letter. Oh, well, there's no harm in you knowing now. He got the sack, you see. The sack? Mm-hmm. After all those years, what a rotten thing to do. Oh, but it's all right now. He's got his job back again. Well, why did he get the sack? What did he do? Wow. Well, the firm employed some smart aleck efficiency bloke, and they worked out oh. that the firm was carrying too many people, and your dad was one of them, so they reckon. But you say he got the job back? Yeah, he has, thanks to Mrs. Thursday. Mrs. Thursday? Mm-hmm. Well, what? Oh, of course. It's one of her companies, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mind you, the dad hasn't got the same job back, mind, no. They're closing down the Draper Street office, but Alice is going to see if he can get some more suitable jobs at the, at the main office, you see. That was nice of her. Mm, he wasn't the only one. Oh, she spoke up for the lot of them. All them that wouldn't find it easy to get another job, that is. Oh, she's turned up trumps, Carol. She really has. Oh, make the tea, would you, love? And he yeah. put the tea in the pot. I must get on, because I want to get this in the oven, you see. I'm making a nice steak and kidney pie for your dad's supper. I don't suppose you can stay, can you? Oh, no, Mum, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I tell you what, I'll come another time, then I can stay longer. Everything's all right, is it? Yes. Fine. You look very smart. Did you get the time off? I didn't expect you in the afternoon. Oh, well, I can more, more or less choose my own time, see? Yeah, oh, fancy. Well, they must think a lot of you. Your boss must think a lot of you. You went to tea with Mrs. Thursday the other day, I hear. How did you know that? Ah, I hear a lot of things. Now, actually, she wrote and told me. She wrote me a letter to relieve my mind about your dad, you see. Very nice typewritten letter it was, too. And she wrote a P.S. about seeing you. Is that all she said? Mm-hmm. Just that she'd met you and that she'd invited you down her house to have a nice chat together. Oh, yes, we did. Mm-hmm. She's very fond of you, you know, Carol. Here, look, here's the letter. See for yourself. Oh, she went out of her way to stand up for your dad and the others. If only there was something I could do for her. But what is there? Yes, excellent. Looks very competitive. Yes, we've put a lot of work in it. Might get it down a thousand or two yet. Oh? I'm giving a copy to Burnett. He's going through it to see if there are any corners we can cut. Some further economies we can make that'll give us that extra edge on our competitors. Well, I'll leave you to it. Oh, may I take this? Yes, it is for you. Thank you. Afternoon, Sir Charles. Look, I'm very busy. What is it you want? Mrs. Thursday asked me to have a word with you about the Bankside tender. Well, what about it? She'd like a look at it before it's submitted. What? She'd like to see it. Oh, now, look here, Hunter. This is ridiculous. Why doesn't she get on with her own affairs and leave me to attend to mine? I should have thought a contract for a um, five million pound offer was very much the chairman's affair. Well, there isn't one available. She'll have to wait. Well, I think I can see two copies on the desk. Yes, the original for delivery first thing tomorrow. Burnett's going to have the other to look through tonight. Ah, then I'll take that one, then. Look, I've already told you there isn't a copy. Imagine, Mrs. Thursday. We'll keep it long. I'll arrange for it to be sent to Burnett direct. Can't understand why... Ah. Yes! Now, where the hell have you been? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Mike. I turn that damn thing off, will you? I can't hear a thing. Just a minute, Mike. I can't hear the telly's up blaring away as usual. All right, shoot. Five million six hundred and forty thousand. Right, fine. Well, I'll put in a quote for about five thousand less, and I don't think anyone will get below that. Yeah, well, Joe Levy's quotes are always just about the lowest anyway. Yeah, well, the tender's closed at noon, so we should have the contract in our pockets by lunchtime. I'll see you in the afternoon. You can pick up your check. Goodbye. The biggest single deal I've ever done. There's a mink in this for you, my lovely. And a nice trip to Monty. And you can have that thing on again now, but keep it low for heaven's sake. I've got work to do. It's a bit early to celebrate, isn't it, Sir Charles? We haven't got the contract yet. Waiting's pretty hard on the nerves. Yes, sir. Uh, would be. What? 
Well, let's have a drink now to, to uh, calm our nerves, and then another one when Joe comes back to celebrate, hmm? Uh, what will you have, Mrs. Thurston? Oh, a pot and lemon. Well, I'm afraid we haven't got... Would you like a nice sherry? Here we are. Uh, we've done it. The contract towers, we've beaten them off. Oh, what? well done. Well, that, that's, that's marvellous. May I have a look? Yes, sign oh. and seal, see for yourself. Well, well now it's time to get down to a little serious drinking, I think. Uh, Mr. Lever. A double scotch. I've deserved it. Mind if I have a look at that? It isn't every day we get a contract for five and a half From million. what I gathered on the QT, we were best by 20,000. It seems that George Noble was next, but his quote was that much too high. There's a mistake. What? Steve? What are you talking about? The price. Look, it's 25,000 pounds lower than we quoted. Oh, you can't see straight. You've been drinking too much. That's the price, all right. Five million, six hundred and fifteen thousand. Well, according to the tender you gave me, your price was five million, six hundred and forty thousand. Hey, you're off your rocker, lad. That's the final quote, five million six hundred fifteen thousand. I ought to know. What Ooh. does this mean, Joe? Has someone slipped up? Oh, somebody has, but it's not us. Huh? What do you know about it? I added twenty-five thousand pounds to Mr. Burnett's copy of the tender. You did what? With uh, Mrs. Thursday's approval, of course. Why not ask Mr. Burnett? What are you talking about? Two can play the undercover game, Mr. Burnett. Acting on information received. You what information? Will somebody kindly put me in the picture? Yes, I discovered that Burnett was working for George Noble. Noble? And that he intended to pass on the exact figure named in our tender. So, I took the liberty of making my little amendment. Oh. Sir Charles? <laughs> Cheers. 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 Leo? Hello, darling. It's me, Carol. <laughs> Carol, Carol, were you thinking about me? That's nice. George? No, I've left him. Oh, I'm staying with an old friend of the family, as a matter of fact. In guess where? Belgrave Square. <laughs> yes. Oh, very rich. No. It's a woman. Sort of aunt. Yes. Yes, I know you're going away. When, when are you going? Come with you? Yes. Of course I'll come with you. I'm at Belgrave House, just across the square. I'll be waiting. Your coffee, miss. Oh, well, how are you, Cleo? Oh, fine. I'm, uh, I'm glad it worked out all right about the tender and everything. Yes, well, we couldn't have done it without your information, my dear. We're very grateful. Well, it makes up for Mrs. Thursday sticking out for my dad. Well, we've just been having a little chat about you. Oh? Yes, uh, I could uh, find a job for you in uh, my office if you... No, in my you. office. That is, if you learn to type. Oh. Oh, no, thanks. You see, I'd ruin my nails on those hard keys. Oh, well, what are you going to do, dear? Well, I, I thought I might um, travel, go abroad. Oh. So I tell you what, I'm thinking of taking your advice and getting married. Not to Mr. Noble. Oh! No, do you mind? No, it's not settled yet, but I've got, I've got plans. Well, that's for me. Well, look, I'm a stash. Well, thanks for taking me in. Bye. Hey, what? Bye. What's happening? Mm. Oh, here, Carol, wait a minute. What's happening? Well, now what's she up to? Oh, my goodness, look at the size of that car. Funny number plates, what say do? No, it's from the Bessarabian Embassy across you the square. You sure? Yes, that's the Shah's limousine, all right. His eldest son is home on holiday. Oh, a Shah. Does that mean she'll have to go into Aram? I doubt it. A Shah? Fancy. Oh, I'd dare to go through the roof if he could see her now. Yeah, do you think I ought to tell her mum? No, it's not your problem. No, I suppose not. Oh, well, I can't stop here join. I've got to make a bread and butter pudding for Bill. Now, all right. I'm... Here, you sit over there and have a nice smoke of your pipe. 